please take a hymnal, page 67. You're going to need it, first and third. You know the song, but you need your book. Please stand. Oh, love of God. for his love, amen? Were every stalk on earth a quill, and were the skies of parchment made, to write the love of God above would drain the ocean dry. Isn't that great? Great, great song. All right, we're so thankful you're here. We're going to pray and ask the Lord to give us a wonderful Lord's Day. Brother Larry Newsom, if you'll pray with us, please pray. Dear Lord God and Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for the privilege to be here. Thank you for a church that is willing to attend in full force, oh Lord God. And Heavenly Father, we pray that, that we're a blessing to you today, as you are to us. And dear Heavenly Father, please take care of the pastor and the choir and the singers as we worship you. In your great, glorious name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. You may be seated all over the building. And I want to take this opportunity on this beautiful Sunday morning to welcome all of our members, and I'd like to welcome our visitors today. We have several visiting with uh, Samuel and Gina. Uh, they're scattered in the congregation, and wherever you're from and whoever you are, we're delighted you're here, and we appreciate you being in attendance this morning. We'll have a regular service, and at the end of the service, we'll dedicate their little baby, okay, to the Lord, and we just appreciate you coming out today to the house of the Lord. I'd like to read this thank you card. It is from uh, Brother uh, Clifford and Miss Connie Biggerstaff, and it says to the Mountain View Church family, thank you for the beautiful arrangement, the calls, the cards, and the prayers for our family. And much appreciated, Connie and Clifford Biggerstaff, and that's in lieu of the uh, home going of uh, Miss Connie's sister recently. And I trust and pray that you that have been through that, you're continuing to pray for our sister and her family, all right? Now, I want to announce that um, after service tonight, uh, we're going to say goodbye to the seniors and several of the chaperones. They're leaving on their senior trip. They'll be leaving from out here, from the bus and the bus area parking lot. So you're welcome to go over and tell them goodbye and help them. And, and all you parents, give them hundreds of dollars to send them off on a good journey. So uh, let's pray for our seniors this week that the Lord will take care of them and bless them while they're gone on the senior trip, all right? Let's have the ushers come on down. We'll get the regular tithe and regular offering. We appreciate you giving to the Lord. Everything else that we really need to say is in the bulletin, but I will. I do want Skylar and Zoe to come down in just a minute uh, after we get done with the offering. If Skylar and Zoe are here, I want them to make their way when these ushers are finished with the offering, all right? Choir, y'all sing, Brother Cam, and you worship God in your giving, all right?
want Skyler to come up here. Skyler, where you at, baby? And Zoe, I want you to come up here. And uh, we got this in the bulletin, but both these young ladies have talked to me this week. And uh, this precious, how old are you, Skyler? Eight years old. And how old are you, Zoe? Come over here. Come over, come over here, Skyler. And, and you're nine years old. And uh, you're both in third grade. You're both, you're both in third grade. You're both in the same class, am I right? And so uh, tell, tell me what happened this week. Did you get saved? Yes, ma'am. Oh, uh, yeah, there you go. There you go. Thank you, Lord. Got ahead of us. So, uh, and now, now did, did you ask the Lord to come into your heart this week? Yes. Yes, ma'am, you did. All right. And, 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 and you did the same thing? She's nervous. She's scared to death. Over I think they're both scared to death. I don't mean to scare her. But hey, the Bible said, Suffer the little children to come unto me. And then it says, Forbid them not. They, when, you get, when you get them saved, or the Lord saves them this young, you, 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 you're getting the soul saved, but you're hopefully saving and salvaging a life. Uh, we don't want them to get out here in rebellion and sin. We want them to get saved young, amen, and early. So we're proud of you. And don't let me forget, we're going to get you down front and shake your hands after service, okay? Thank you both. God bless you. You may be seated, all right? We appreciate it. And uh, Brother Josiah, come up here. This brother got us in touch. You'll read the bulletin, got us in touch with an organization and tapped in, I think, to the, to the South, I mean, the, the Federal Department of Education CARES Act and all that. And I won't get into all of it right now. But uh, we are looking at approval to get air purifiers in the school because of COVID and all that stuff. And then I didn't know this, Dr. Love told me about new computers. So isn't that great? And so thank you. Thank you for getting us in touch with the right people. It's good to know people in high places. You gotta know people in high places once in a while. So thank you, God bless you. You pray for us and dedicate the offering. Thank you, Pastor. Dear Father, Lord, we pray this morning. We thank you for the privilege once again of gathering here in your presence, Lord, to worship our holy and just and loving God. Lord, we just can't honor you enough this morning. Lord, we pray that you would, uh, that we'll worship you in spirit and in truth today. Father, Lord, we thank you for this offering. Lord, thank you for the gift and the giver. Lord, I pray you'll bless it. Pray that it'll go forth, Lord, to be uh, for the preaching of the gospel, Lord, for the, the good tidings, Father, that will shine a light in the darkness. Father, I, Lord, I want to pray for our country this morning. Lord, that there's so much going on. Lord, you know all of the needs. Uh, but, Lord, I pray that you would um, just raise up a standard in this day. I pray that you would help us, Lord, to, to shine as lights and, and to take a stand in the evil day. Father, I pray now for the, the rest of the service. You'll bless it. Father, I pray that you will uh, minister to our hearts. And, Lord, let, let your word go forth with power. And, Lord, we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank
Everybody take a hymnal and turn to 409. I know whom I have believed. If you'd stand, please, please. Ladies are getting ready. We're going to do one special this morning because we're going to preach and then we're going to dedicate the baby. But uh, uh, I want you to all make sure, especially our visitors and all of our members, make sure, come on ladies, okay? Make sure you get a bulletin because a lot of other things in there you need to read about and keep up with. And, and then we just were uh, informed of another prayer request and I want to give it to you right now. It's Miss Peggy Mullinax's husband. He's in Spartanburg Regional Hospital, very sick. They're running all kinds of tests. And so she'll be with him tonight, but let's remember to pray for her husband that the Lord will have his way, and uh, maybe we can go up and see him well, if they'll let us. They may let us, and they may not, but pray for her husband, okay? Y'all ladies ready? Sing with the chorus, all right?
Great. I love the words of that song, don't you? God bless you. Take your Bibles, everybody, and go to Luke chapter number 19, please, in the New Testament. And I trust you brought a copy of God's Word with you today to the house of the Lord. Luke chapter number 19. And then we'll preach. And don't let me forget, please, because I do get in a hurry. And I don't want to forget, but we're going to dedicate the little baby this morning. And so please, somebody say a word to me before I get in a hurry and dismiss us. Forget all about that. We don't want to do that. Luke chapter number 19. I mean, glad to be saved this morning. Glad you are. Verse number one. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans. Does anybody know what that means? I hope you do. And he was rich. Do you know why he was rich? He was rich because he had gained it through fraud and extortion. The publicans were like the tax collectors. Well, obviously, he wasn't just a tax collector. The Bible said in verse number two, he was the chief of them. He was over the entire uh, constituency of the tax collector. And the Bible said he was rich. And Rome didn't pay that good. So he shouldn't have been rich. I wish I had somebody. He shouldn't have been rich. But, and I read this, Brother, Brother Herpel, that Rome would set the rate. Watch this now. Brother, Brother, Brother Wofford, they would set the rate, and then, as it were, they would turn the blind eye. So they don't care how they uh, got, uh, obtained the tax or received it. And Brother Perry, they didn't care how much they got as long as the rate or the ratio was satisfied. So that's how he was rich by fraud and extortion. And by the way, the Jews couldn't stand these tax collectors. Verse number three, and he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press, because he was little of stature. And he ran before him and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him. And said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today 
I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and came down, watch this, and received them joyfully. And I'm glad I did that one day. Oh, my. I didn't know all that was happening that night. I still can't explain it all. But I know one thing, I received him. Could I tell you something? When I received him, he changed my life forever. And I don't regret a mile. The single greatest decision of my life was the night, I feel like running, amen, was the night that I received him by faith. Oh my, oh my, that'll make a Presbyterian happy. Verse number seven, and when they saw it, they all murmured saying, watch this, told you now about how they couldn't stand him, that he was gone to be guest with a man that is a sinner. And by the way, he was a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. You know what's a good evidence of salvation? When the taker becomes the giver. When you're willing to make restitution for the wrongs you committed. That's what he's doing here. <clears throat> Verse number nine. And Jesus said unto him, this day is salvation come to this house for as much as he also is the son of Abraham. Verse number 10, for the son of man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. He's talking about Zacchaeus. I want to preach this morning with the help of God on somebody is looking for you. Somebody is looking for you. I'd like to do my very, very best to extol the virtues of the Lord Jesus Christ and what he truly is all about. In verse number 10, the Bible said, the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. And lest I get in a hurry and not say it, you'll never, you'll never get found. You'll never get saved until you realize that you are lost. You have to realize that you're undone, that you're a sinner, that you're unchristian, you're unregenerate, and you've never trusted the Lord Jesus Christ. But can I tell you something? Just like these little girls this week, if you ever realize that you're truly lost and that you're unredeemed and unsaved, then thank God you're making a lot of progress. And I want to tell you without apology and without any hesitation that there is somebody looking for you. I want you to know that according to verse number 10. Verse number 10, Brother Landon, is the key verse in the Gospel of Luke. Somebody has said, Brother David, that it is the golden text of Luke's gospel. And note, ladies and gentlemen, I never really studied this much, but did you know that in verse number 10, there is not one single two-syllable word that is found in that sentence. You know why? Because God wants to make it plain, and God wants to make it easy, and God wants to make it simple. And in verse number 10, the Lord Jesus Christ emphatically declares his primary purpose on earth was to save sinners. Zacchaeus being a prime example. And the Lord Jesus Christ was both able, thank God, and willing to save Zacchaeus. Notice verse number one. He came to the place, the city of Jericho. And Jericho here pictures for you and I a world or a city that is under a curse. According to Joshua 6, and verse number 26, Joshua said, Cursed be Jericho. It was the city that was old in sin, 
a world of haughty pride and rebellion against God. In 1 Corinthians, I mean, 1 Kings chapter 16, a man by the name of Hiel, he was a worshiper of Baal. He rebuilt the city of Jericho out of rebellion and out of pride against God. He named his two kids out of loftiness and being exalted and pride against God. But yet even in ancient Jericho, God showed mercy and God showed grace. Then I want to say a word right there. Do you know who was saved in Jericho? A lady by the name of Rahab. I said Rahab. Now, we don't dwell long about this, but you know what Rahab was? She was a harlot. Must I go into the definition of a harlot? Somebody that is promiscuous and somebody that is sexually uh, uh, unfaithful. I mean a harlot. But aren't you glad for the mercy of God? Aren't you God glad for the grace of God? That even Brother Galloway in Rahab's situation, God saved her and changed her life. Could I tell you something? He can still save harlots. Amen. I don't know whether or not you and I truly believe all that or not, but I want you to know, according to that Bible, and according to Luke chapter 19 and verse number 10, that's the crowd he's looking for. He said he didn't come to call the righteous to repentance, but the unrighteous. He said, Brother Randy, I didn't come for those that are well. I've come for those that are sick. And so Rahab, where was she saved, Brother Stoltz? She was saved in Jericho. And now here we are in Jericho in the New Testament. And once again, it's time for the mercy of God. It's time, Brother Josiah, for the grace of God to be extended. And that's exactly what was extended on that fateful day in Jericho. A man that was also a sinner. He wasn't uh, in sexual uh, deviation, but he was a person that was guilty of thievery and fraud and extortion. And the Bible said that he was a sinner. And I want you to know today that we are all sinners. Amen. Yeah. By the way, I'm a sinner, but I'm a saved sinner. Amen. I'm a saved sinner. God came by. Jesus came by, and he came to a place called Jericho. And by the way, the Lord, in verse number 5, uttered the invitation. Look in verse number 5. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. You'll like this. Listen to this. Here we are, the invited was the inviter. I said the invited was the inviter. And the guest became the true host. This is the only time in your Bible that the Lord Jesus Christ ever offered himself as a guest in somebody else's home. Did you know that Zacchaeus was the last convert of the Lord before he went to the cross of Calvary? And so here we have a mercy and we have grace and thank God Miss Paula we have salvation that came to this man's house I want to say some words about verse number 10 as I try to hurry this morning look if you will in verse number 10 the Bible said the son of man I want to say a word about the lofty title the lofty title it doesn't say the son of God it said brother Mike Lee jr. The Son of Man. What is that title there for? Brother Trey, that identifies him as perfect humanity, identifying himself with those that he came to save. It also identifies him as his universal and eternal dominion as the last Adam. That is not a lower rated term. I know Son of God is a divine term, but Son of Man, hey, could I tell you something? 
we need to thank God today that he identified himself not only as the Son of God, not only as the Savior, and not only as the Creator, but thank God he identified himself as the Son of Man, the last Adam. And when he says that he's the Son of Man, you know what he's saying? I'm identifying with the very people who I'm coming to planet Earth to die for and to redeem. And I'm glad, thank God, he came to planet Earth and identified with humanity, not necessarily as the Son of God, but as the Son of Man. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, I, I, I don't know. Got a lot of visitors here today. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came to this earth, took upon him a body, lived on this earth a perfect life, amen, a sinless life. By the way, he couldn't have been our substitute were he not sinless, amen. He couldn't have redeemed us from sin were there any sin in him? But the Bible said he had made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Don't ever think that when the Lord Jesus Christ identifies himself as the Son of Man, that is a lower designation than the Son of God. That is a human designation where he says to you and I, I am identifying with Adam's fallen lost race. And I want to tell you something. He loved us so much. He condescended so much. He cared so much. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And Brother Trey, he came to this earth as the son of man. Can I tell you something? He could have sent Michael. He could have sent Gabriel. He could have sent a seraphim. He could have sent a cherubim. But he didn't do any of that. He didn't do any of that. He came himself. I said he came himself. He said before the very councils of God, somebody has to go to redeem mankind. Somebody has to go to pay the sin debt. Somebody has to go to shed blood. And I'm glad, thank God, he came to this earth for me. And he came for you. And he came for the tax collector. And he came for the harley. And he came for the prostitute. And he came for the drunkard. And he came for the prostitute. And he came for the drug addict. He came for the liar. He came for the God cusser. He came for the hater. He came for the murderer. He came for the disrespectful. Thank God he came for me. Amen. And he came for you. And he didn't have to. I said he didn't have to. But he came because he loved us. Came because he loved us. I want to go back to Jericho a minute. It's been on my mind this morning. Joshua sent the spies and they found a place of concealment in a lady's house. Brother Joe, that was Rahab. I'm going to slow down. And I want you to think with me again. I want you to think with me because I know how we are. This is what's been bothering me. Rahab the harlot. We tend to, we tend to look the other way with those kind of people. We tend to wash our hands of those kind of people. We use, and it's going to get real quiet, but we use terms like white trash, street people, good for nothing, despicable, terrible, disgusting lifestyle, abhorrent lifestyle, 
And every one of those terms are accurate. But guess what? She got saved. She got saved. Are you getting this? She got saved. So the next time that you and I begin to go down our righteous pathway or our righteous roadside because we're not putting drugs in our veins and we're not snorting crack or smoking marijuana or we're not using God's name in vain or we haven't stole anything or we're not on a liquor binge or we're not being sexual promiscuous. Hey, friend, don't forget Thanks to Calvary, we're not the man we used to be. Thanks to Calvary, we're not the woman we used to be. I want you to know that God loves sinners, amen. I said he loves sinners. Miss Miranda, he came for sinners. He died for sinners. He shed his blood for sinners. And you and I might despise it. And you and I might walk by it. And you and I might thumb up our spiritual uh, suspenders around it. And we may not want to go witness to it. And we may not want to go give a gospel track to it. But I want you to know that's the crowd God's looking for. I said that's the crowd God's looking for. And may God help us to not give up on people. And may God help us not to throw in the towel and write people off. I want you to know today he's the son of man. Amen. That means he identifies with the very people that he came to redeem. I wish they straighten up. I wish they turn over a new leaf. I wish they'd do better. But the truth is, without a supernatural intervention of God's power, most of them are not going to do better. And if they do do better, it'll only be temporary. It'll only be for a while. I want to tell you something. Alcoholics Anonymous is not the answer. Gambling Anonymous is not the answer. Drugs Anonymous is not the answer. Sexual promiscuity Anonymous is not the answer. But thank God I know the answer. I know the answer. I've got the solution. I have the right antidote. Thank God I know the right medicine. Thank God I recommend the cure. I know what will change people's lives. I know what will transform people. It's a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank God. Thank God. I'm not trying to elicit a smattering of amens, but you're welcome to if you want to. Could I ask you something? Where would you be this morning? And what would you be doing last night? And what would you have been doing Friday night on the dance floor, listening to the jukebox, sitting at the bar with a, a jug of suds or a tumbler of suds? Who knows what all of us could have become. I could be strung out on drugs. I could be strung out on heroin. I could be strung out on crack cocaine. I could be strung out on marijuana. But I'm not any of that. Ronnie Fells, I'm not any of that. Because one day, as a 16-year-old boy, I said, God, I'm a sinner. I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to die in the shape that I have. Thank you for dying for me. Oh, Lord Jesus, I accept you this day. I trust you this day. I want you as my Savior. I want you in my life. And thank God he was looking for me. I didn't know it, Brother Landon. I didn't know it. I didn't even know it. But he was already looking for me. I said he was already looking for me. And thank God when a seeking Savior and a seeking sinner get together, I want to tell you something, something spiritual and something the miraculous and something wonderful is going to happen. I said when a seeking Savior and a seeking sinner get together and thank God something wonderful is going to happen. Amen. You ought to thank God you're saved today. You ought to thank God he found you. You ought to thank God he came looking for you. You ought to thank God you didn't come to him but he came to you. Amen. Came to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Thank God. Thank God he rescues the perisher. Thank God he cares for the dying. Thank God he changes life. Thank God he gives salvation. Thank God he gives eternal life. Thank God he gives peace. Thank God he gives joy. Thank God he gives contentment. I'm talking about being saved today by the grace of God. I want you to notice in verse 10 the most wonderful title that could be applicable to this passage. That is, it's a lofty title, the Son of Man. But then I want you to notice the next two couple words. For the Son of Man is what? Is come. It means you had to be somewhere. Oh, Lord God. If he comes, he had to come from somewhere. But obviously, if he comes, oh, God, he had to already be in existence. And I got news for you, he was. But where'd he come from? Where'd he come from? Oh, Lord. He's the determinate counsel of God. From all eternity, the triune God, he left heaven's splendor. Watch this. Just come to me. He left the bosom of the Father. He left the glory that he shared with the Father. That's John 17. Oh, what love. He didn't come for us good people. He didn't come for you straight walking people. He came for the crooked. He came for the harlot. He came for the tax collector. He came for the thief. Amen. So not only do you have the lofty title, but secondly, you have the lowly stoop, I call it. The lowly stoop. He condescended to men of low estate. He had to come from somewhere, and that was heaven. That was the bosom of the Father. That was the glory that he shared. I know I'm preaching time, all right? But the glory that he shared with the Father through, from all eternity, from all eternity, and came down to this mud ball of an earth, come down to planet earth, took up his residence in a virgin's womb. Somebody help me. In a virgin's womb. I was born without the aid of a natural father because God was his father and the blood that was in his face was the very blood of God. Amen. Acts 20 and verse number 28. Are you listening? Where did he come from? He came from the heavenly world. I said he came from the heavenly world. By the way, he wasn't created. He always was. I said he always was. I said he wasn't created. Uh, and watch it. And Bethlehem was not his beginning. Amen. I said Bethlehem was not his beginning. He already existed. He already existed. So not only do you find the lofty title, but thank God for the lowly stoop. By the way, where'd he come to? We know where he came from. Where'd he come to? Came to a stable. Came to a manger. He came to a fodder for food. He, Miss Jackie came to a crib. The owner of it all. The creator of it all. The ruler of this world. Left heaven's glory. Came to Bethlehem to be born of a virgin. So well, where else did he come to? And only came Brother Adam to Bethlehem. But thank God he came to Calvary. I said, thank God he came to Calvary. Calvary is the place of the cross. Calvary is the place of redemption. Calvary, by the way, without the shedding of blood is no remission. I thank God today, Brother Perry, for the lofty title. I thank God for the lowly stew. But then number three, look at verse number 10 again. For the Son of Man has come. Here, let's go to the next word. Come to do what? To seek, amen. I call that the longing search, amen. The longing search. I got to thinking about this this morning. 
I'm glad on that wonderful night of Tuesday, March the 30th, 1976, he was looking for me. He was seeking. I didn't even realize it, but I'll never forget that hour, Dr. Love. I will never forget that hour. I want to help somebody right here. When he gently knocked on the door of my heart, when he gently let me know that he was seeking me, that he was looking for me, that he was searching for me. By the way, that makes me think of Luke chapter 15. The woman lit the light and swept earnestly until she found the coin that was lost. The shepherd went out and left us 99 and he found the lost sheep. The prodigal son was reconciled. And by the way, when he was reconciled, he found out that the father came running, looking for him. Are you listening? I'm glad today for the longing serve. I'm glad to report to you today uh, through the Bible and through Sunday school and through Christian school and through Christian music and through evangelization and through missionary endeavors. You know what's going on? Christ is looking for sinners, amen. He's looking for sinners. I'm going to run that by you again and slow down when I say it. I think through the word of God, I think through the arm of the local church, the arm of the local church, I think through the Sunday school hour, I think through the worship hour, through the Sunday night service, Brother Nathan, through the Wednesday night service, through vacation Bible school, through revival, through jubilee, through sowers and reapers, through visitation, through gospel literature, gospel preaching on the radio, gospel preaching on the television, if you can find any, World Wide Web, evangelization. You know what he's doing? He's looking for sinners. He's searching for sinners. And oh, what a wonderful thing it is. What a wonderful thing it is when you find out now listen to this little girl, listen to this young man, listen to this mom or dad, member of visitor. It's a wonderful thing when you find out that he's knocking at the door of your heart. Everybody needs to listen right here. Everybody needs to listen. All you kids look up here. All you young boys and girls look up here. It is a wonderful, wonderful experience and a heavenly thing when you find out that he's knocking on the door of your heart. He don't have to. He doesn't have to. He's not obligated to, Miss Bethany, but thank God I remember. Man, I remember it like it was yesterday. I remember where I was at. I remember where I was sitting. I remember the night. I remember the church, Miss Dovey. I remember the preachers. I believe I almost remember they sang just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me. And I hardly couldn't stand it, Brother Mike. I mean, I thought my heart was going to run away. And that's before heart problems. I thought it was going to run away. I looked around and I thought, is everybody else experiencing this? Can they hear my heart beating? Why are my palms sweaty? Why am I so nervous? What's going on? What's going on? Hey, friend, we call that Holy Ghost conviction. We call that the Spirit of God. We call that the seeking Savior. We call that Christ knocking at the door of your heart. And if it's knocking at the door of your heart, don't keep the door shut. Thank God, open the door. Open the door. Hallelujah for the day that you open the door and I open the door. I'm excited about it. I mean it. I'm thrilled about it. Miss Sis McMakin, after all these years, I think I've been here maybe 20 years, here right at 20 years at Mountain View and been saved since I was 16. And Brother David, after all these years, the story has never changed. The message has stayed the same. Thank God for the lofty title. Thank God for the lowly stoop. He came. And thank God for the longing search. He came to seek. He came to seek. And could I say this to you? Move on. He'll use you and he'll use me to seek out and to reach more sinners. To reach out. And by the way, we need to be a channel. We need to be a vessel. We need to be available. We need to be a conduit. 
that he can seek out and speak to sinners. Look at the next verse. I'm in verse 10 again. For the Son of Man has come to seek, and but doesn't stop there, Brother David, and do what? And to save. I'm glad he didn't stop at seeking. Thank God he saves. I call that the loving salvation. I'm glad I'm saved today. I'm thankful that I'm saved. I wonder, Miss Tori Miller, I wonder where I'd be. I wonder what kind of family I'd have. I wonder what kind of peace of mind I'd have. Brother Landon, I wonder what kind of future. Brother Jacob, what kind of future would I have if I wasn't saved? Ah, oh, my. Wonder what, wonder what I could have got into. Brother Paul Wallace, wonder how messed up my mind could be today. Wonder how my body could be messed up. Wonder how my life could be turned upside down. And by the way, you know this is the truth, and I am going to ask for an amen right here. You know this is the truth. There are multitudes of people whose lives are royally messed up. Royally messed up. You know why? Because they've rejected the Son of God. And I'm going to tell you, most, most y'all, y'all are going to agree with this or not agree with it. Most of people's problems are a spiritual issue. Most of people's problems, Brother David Stay, are a spiritual issue. You get that spiritual issue taken care of, and I tell you, friend, you are 85% down the road, 90, 95% down the road of getting your life straightened back out. You ever thought about, you ever thought about maybe, and I know some of you don't want to think about this because you're so righteous, and you've been good all your life, and you're squeaky clean, and you're, your, your cousins are the Pharisees and the scribes and probably the hypocrites, say amen. But you, you, you know, you would never do nothing wrong. The truth is, we're not for the grace of God and we're not for salvation. You could be a drunk tonight. You could be a drunk. The truth is, and I'm just going to preach, amen. The truth is, I think somebody, I'm not going to call their name. I think somebody told me yesterday, if, if I heard them right, God, I, I can't believe it. If I heard them right, if I heard them right, I think they told me marijuana in the sixth grade. I think that's what they told me, smoking marijuana in the sixth grade. Where do you think that would ever lead to? I'll tell you what it'll lead to, a shipwreck, destitute, royally messed up life. But thanks to Calvary, I'm not the man I used to be. Thanks to Calvary, I don't go there anymore. And when the tears ran down my face, I tried to tell them, thanks to Calvary, we don't live there anymore. Thank God for, not only, not only does he see, but thank God he saves. And by the way, when he saves, he does a very good job. And when he saves, he saves forever. And when he saves, he's not an Indian giver. He doesn't take it back. Thank God, once saved, always saved. Eternal security. But again, if you'll just run back down memory lane, think about how foul-mouthed you were, how flippant you were, how much of a liar you were, how drugs had you, and drinking had you, and sin had you, and promiscuity had you, and partying had you, and dancing had you. By the way, that's the key, had. All that shouldn't be happening now. All that shouldn't be happening now. That's right, I said dancing. And I said partying. Dancing and partying. Christians don't dance and Christians don't party. Christians fellowship. Amen, we don't go to parties where they're drinking and getting drunk and showing their nakedness. Christians don't live that way. Christian, I was free, amen. Christians don't want that kind of lifestyle. But here's what I'm trying to tell you. We're not for Jesus, and we're not for salvation, and we're not for God saving you. You'd still be a party animal. You'd still be a drinker. You'd still be a pot smoker. You'd still be a druggie. But thank God you're not, amen. Here's what I want to say and move on. And such were some of you. Were some of you. But you're washed. You're sanctified, amen. So we have, the, we have the lofty title. We have the lowly stoop. We have the longing search. We have the loving salvation. And lastly, in verse number 10, we have the lost sinner. 
to them which was what? Lost, amen. You have to identify with the principle of lostness if you, if you ever think or even when you entertain the idea of getting saved. It's for sinners. I think the party ain't got one or two. I can always tell when I'm preaching that people are kind of easily distracted somewhat. You know, most people are, all of us are really, me included. But then when I really zero in on something like that, all of a sudden they're looking straight ahead. They don't take their eyes off because you know what they're doing? What's he going to say next? Let me hang on every word. Well, you should have been hanging on every word to begin with. But that party might have got you, huh? That party might have got you. That social drinking. That, 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 that music. That, that little dancing. A little dancing. That little staying alive. A little honky tonk. A little honky tonk jukebox. A little rock and roll. That old hip hop. And well, I'll tell you one thing. Anybody, anybody bounce around the hip hop? I can tell you what they are. They're crazy. I can say some more things, but I better not. We're on YouTube. Are you listening? Partying. Partying. Everybody parties. No, they don't. Every Christian drinks a little bit. Hey, look on up here. No, they don't. No, they don't. All Christians go to dances. They do. I've never been to one. You ever been to a dance? You ever been to a dance? Right. right. I understand. That's right. I try. Talk to me. Young and, and young and dumb. Yeah. Was she with you? <laughs> Her name was, was Ethel or something. I meant to say... I meant to say, since you've been saved, you ain't been to no dance. Right. No, you haven't. Christians don't live that way. See, that's so accepted now. That's so accepted now. According to the Bible, it's not accepted. And see, I've hit a stumps what I've done. And I need to, and we need to be dedicating a baby. I'm gonna tell you, if you still like partying, if you still enjoy drinking, if you still enjoy dancing. So let, me get, let, me, let me get it right. This is horizontal, right? Horizontal right here. This is vertical. Somebody said that, somebody said that dancing is, um, well, it's either vertical or horizontal fornication. I knew it'd get quiet. It's one of the two. <laughs> quit laughing. Quit laughing. It's not funny. Don't you be doing it. <laughs> I know you're not. This young generation, they think that's just everything goes. This young generation think everything's acceptable. Could I tell you something? You go down that road, you go down that route, and I'm going to tell you at the end of the road, it's going to be nothing but heartache for you. Nothing but heartache. Nothing but heartache. Here's my point. When Jesus saves us, he changes us. And that change lasts forever. You don't want to go back to that lifestyle. So I thank God that this is for lost sinners. Are you lost today? Come on to the instruments. Are you lost? I'm asking you a question. Are you lost? Have you ever realized that somebody's looking for you? Have you ever realized that the Savior is knocking at the door of your heart? Have you ever realized that he wants to save you? He wants to take you to heaven? He wants to give you the greatest gift that anybody could ever receive, and that is the gift of eternal life. So, I'm saying I'm done. Somebody, somebody is looking for you. Let's bow our head. Brother Nathan, come up here and pray for us, please. Brother Nathan, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for the day. Thank you for the message, Lord. Thank you for the day, Lord, that you came looking for us, God. 
Lord, thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that when we weren't looking for you, you were after us. Yes. And I pray that one in the building this morning, Lord, that you've been after. Lord, that little girl, that little boy, that teenager. Oh, yes. Or that young adult, Lord, that's still enjoying them things of the world, God. God, the one you've been after, Lord, the one you spoke to this morning. God, I beg you, with the sweet spirit of God and the Holy Ghost, get a hold of their heart. In between services today, even, Lord, make it hard for them to enjoy anything. God, let them see you, Lord. I pray, Lord, you just do a work in their heart. God, please, Lord, just help us. Help us to pray for those that are away from the Lord. Help us to pray for the sinner. Help us to be a light yes, to our God, family. Yes, God, yes, yes. God, help us to be a light to our co-workers, Lord, our friends, Lord. That Help us to live a life that would show that Jesus seeks and saves the lost. Yes, God, he does. We pray these things. We ask them in your holy and precious name. Amen. Let's stand. We're going to sing one verse, all right?